welcome you in. It's five minutes after the hour of nine o'clock, and we appreciate all of you tuning in and joining us. Uh, welcome to the Talk of the Town segment. And as I said, uh, you know, we do all kinds. Sometimes we talk to uh, senators and congressmen and business owners and musicians and just all kinds of people on Talk of the Town. We always try to have somebody interesting to talk to. So I promise you we'll fit the bill with interesting this morning uh, <laughs> with uh, with a couple of guys we got in here. Um, let me let me preface by saying the reason that we have the guys here, one of the things that we're going to get around to mentioning is that they actually are in a band. Uh, it's Jackson Howard, and they've got a CD out here. Uh, some good stuff on it, too, actually. Uh, we, we'll listen to uh, one of the songs, a little bit of uh, one of the songs in a while, but they're actually doing something really cool with this and giving all the money uh, to the animal shelter, which I thought was really neat uh, to do because those folks are... Uh, those folks are hurting for money all the time. So uh, we'll uh, say good morning to Head Mike here. Uh, Howard Hedda. How you doing, Howard? Great, Shane. Good to see you. You too. Now, uh, we've been scheduling this, and we keep we had to keep changing it around to make everybody's schedule work out, but it finally did, so we're glad y'all are here. Yeah, man. We're, we're glad we could work this out finally, too. Get you up there with him. Okay. And, uh, and then Eddie Jackson. How you doing, Eddie? Oh, that would be me, yes. Now, Eddie, how do you know this fella? <laughs> We flew airplanes together and then got in the band. Oh, really? Pretty much uh, <laughs> 1987, I think. Yeah, I believe. I think so, yeah. 87, the band, or 87, no, the airplane? Yeah. No, no, I mean, did you start the the band in 87? We, uh, we did, yeah. Wow. I didn't know the band had been together that long. Oh, yeah. It, it was, uh, uh, yeah, back 87, 88, 89, yeah. And then we didn't get into Nashville and recording, really, until... I think it was 92, 91 or 92. Hmm. Now, gotta hold that pretty close. Yeah. How many, uh, how many CDs have y'all put out? Uh, this is actually the second one. The second one. And this, this has got some of the cuts from our original CD and plus some extra. So, okay. Uh, and, and the original CD was done in Nashville. It was done, uh, uh, with a great bunch of guys. In fact, if you look at, at a Garth Brooks album and you look at, uh, our album, you'll see some of the players, mm-hmm. some of the musicians. They're yeah. all the same. I got yeah, you. Yeah. What a uh, what made you decide to do the 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 band? Just both of you love for music, just do something fun. I think we were actually we were both flying. Uh, Eddie and I were on a seven twenty seven in those uh, back in those days, and we it was our first trip together. And we just uh, we started talking about music, and and I found out. Later on, this guy was an incredible guitar player. I mean, we're talking about, uh, he may be one of the best in the state of North Carolina. He was drunk when we got in. (laughs) 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 But uh, anyway, we started talking about uh, music and stuff, and and we had a lot of the same ideas, same Mm -hmm. attitudes towards music. We just started playing, and we ended up getting people together and uh, uh, kind of, Gave birth to an airline band. It was funny <laughs> because we used to play places like, uh, where was it? Whispers, Whispers, downtown Charlotte. And, you know, we were all pilots. Mm-hmm. And there was actually a band that used to kind of <laughs> compete with us, sort of, and they were all doctors. <laughs> and, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was, it was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, one night, you know, they would be playing down there, and another night we'd be playing. <laughs> You ever anyway. played the Sunset Beach Bar in St. Martin? <laughs> <laughs> During the layover. Been there, been there many, many yeah. times, never played. Yeah, yeah. All right, so how did uh, you, you each, how did you come to, to be pilots? Uh, I couldn't make a living playing a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one good thing. Yeah. Uh, one good reason, I guess. I just always, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to fly. I mean, mm-hmm. I was just, you know... Uh, I think my parents wanted me to go to med school and all that. I think that's what everybody's parents want you to do. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, I said, sorry, I want to, I want to fly, you know, so that's what I did. Now, now, um, you, when you first got into, uh, flying and commercially, who did you work for? Uh, well, I worked for, man, I worked for a lot of places. I, I, I flew anything. I didn't go get into military because, you know, when I got out of college, you know, the Vietnam thing had wound down, and yeah. there was mm-hmm. still a glut of pilots from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried to get in the military, Navy, Air Force, 
And they said, come back in five years and maybe we'll have a war going on. We could use you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I just flew, I flew air freight. I flew, uh, commuters. I flew anything. I worked for a little commuter down in Georgia, ASA. They had about three, four airplanes back in those days. And, you know, but that's, that's how I got started doing that. I flew dead bodies for funeral homes. Really? I did. That's really? awesome. I hauled dead bodies in vans for a funeral home, so we got that in common. I, I didn't. I didn't like that part because you had to touch them. Yeah. Well, um, at least they didn't complain about turbulence or stuff like that. I always had someone with me. I had a list of uh, people that would they wanted to fly, but I never told them why they were going until we get there. And the, the uh, first would show. By up. the way, <laughs> uh, now where where at? I mean Mississippi. Mississippi. And you actually uh, worked, Howard, you ended up working for Piedmont, correct? That's where we both, that's where we both met. Y'all yeah. met at Piedmont Airlines. Yeah, we should now, have now Howard was. Turboprop. Uh, no, we didn't have, we didn't fly the turboprop. In fact, yeah. when I was hired back there, they had, I think, they were just phasing out the uh, YS 11s. Yeah. <clears throat> and they were, uh, you know, I went, I went right to the 737. Yeah. For for people that fly not uh, for people that fly a lot now, uh-huh. but maybe younger than than say me, somebody who's just in their in their thirties or younger, tell them what they missed <laughs> because that's, uh, it, it, flying has changed. Hasn't oh it? my gosh, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's 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 very different nowadays. You know, I mean, to, to get an idea of it, uh, I guess that uh, movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, um, Catch Me If You Can. Uh-huh. Was kind of you know he was impersonating a, a pilot. Right. That was the the glory days of Pan Am and the stewardesses and the uniforms and all that. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I missed it. You missed it. I missed it. Wow. You could smoke on the plane. That ashtrays there. Oh the yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes <laughs> the, the the cockpits. You know, depending on who you were flying with. I, back way back when. I mean, it was just a big pile of smoke because the the captain or. <laughs> Or it would be there smoking and smoking and smoking and, yeah. and you can't say anything. Like, would you please put that out? I mean, yeah. you just didn't say that. You know? it's, it's a big party. <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're right. I mean, you, you, no one ever complained. I mean, about, it's, 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 secondhand it's just, smoke or... it's just very, very different. Yeah, it, it I mean, different. you know, yeah. I mean, talk about Catch Me If You Can, that movie. I mean, you know, things like that could have happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, absolutely <laughs> impossible. I actually, I, I went to, I went to go to work one day not long ago, and went to go through security, and I had no idea. I was getting ready to go fly a trip overseas, and I went through security, and uh, turned out my ID had expired, mm. and so I was like. Forget it. You can't go through. And it's like, oh my gosh, I got this departure. Anyway, I got, I got, we got the paperwork rolling and everything going on, and and I got through pretty quickly in time to. They take my it flight. just as serious with the employees yeah. as they do the public. Uh, no, yeah. you're expired. Oh, I'm telling you, it's it's absolutely <clears throat> serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you said a what was it a seven? What you said your favorite plane to fly was a seven? Oh, seven twenty-seven. I mean, that was <laughs> it. That yeah. was it. The Cadillac, the race car, they said the whole it's still the best yards. airplane they really? ever made. Well, I mean, you know, they, there's some pretty neat stuff out there. There's some pretty neat technology. The technology is just, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, 727 was basically a manual jet. Yeah. You, you hand flew that thing. Oh, you know? really? Oh, yeah. And, but it was, it was beautiful. It looked like it was doing Mach 0.8 at the, at sitting there at the gate. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it would. It was a fast jet. We've heard now uh, with the technology that it's almost kind of boring to fly. I mean, you, once you take off, the computers take Never over. Never boring. And... Never yeah. boring. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, doesn't matter. I mean, you know. I mean, Eddie. I mean, we both have 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 had enough experience with this stuff. I yeah. Tell you, it's just there's always something to do. Well, the seven twenty seven was the first. Voice activated aircraft. He would just say, "Do it," and everybody. There's two other people did everything. So it was the first uh, voice automated airplane. <laughs> That's true. The captain actually, we you know, we didn't have a whole. I was, uh, you know, you truly, you know, do this, do that, do this, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except for when, of course, it was my leg as a captain, I, and I flew it. Yeah. And, but it, but it was, 
it was a wonderful airplane to physically fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, it, I loved it. And when they got rid of it, I even wrote a song about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's on that album. So yeah. they, they don't fly the 727 anymore? No. I mean, no. you see one, I think, does FedEx still fly them? I think. How was, uh, what did it look like? Hey, where were the engines on, on it? Did it have one on the? The tri-motors at the back of the, back of uh, the. Oh, the uh, three back there. Three back. I got you. Had a T-tail, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. A lot of what flies now, the majority, there's a lot of Airbus. Uh, I, I know when we flew last time, I think we flew American, and it was an Airbus A321, I think, and it wasn't a huge airplane, but uh, yeah. I, I remember when I was talking with you, you said Airbus, they had a lot of technology in those planes now. Oh, like, it's like there's incredible. no cables and stuff. It's all computerized, and, you know, you like the computerized stuff, Ed? I do. It's so easy. <laughs> When you get to that, you go, where, why, why did it take me this long? Yeah. Do they fly good compared to like this? Really? With your like a video, video yeah. game? It like is. a video game. There you go. That's Listen, good... how impressive. I just want to hear it from, from pilots. We're all very impressed. How impressive was uh, Captain Sullenberger's landing in the Hudson? Oh, I've talked to Yeah. Well, you know what? The, the thing about Sully's uh, landing, really, is the thing that I think was so incredible is that it's really hard to describe the feeling that the pilot would have when you lose both your engines. You lose your thrust. You you can't do anything. You're coming out of the sky. I mean, I, you talk about a heart attack. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's, you know, you, it, but then it's like Sully said, hey, I got a job to do, you know. But the beautiful part about the whole thing was that he saw that river as a runway. A lot of things could have happened. A lot of things people may have done. And one of the worst things that could possibly have been done at that point, and he proved it in more ways than not, was try to go back to the airport he took off from. Yeah. That would have been a disaster. Um, you know, the movie kind of depicted, and, and I, don't, I don't know that it went down this way. We were all hailing Sully as a hero and all that. And the NTSB was grilling him pretty good about, you know, we, they, they, there was a line in the movie, you could have made it back. And he said, no, yeah. I, no, I couldn't. Uh, he proved them. He, he couldn't. I mean, and, and, you know, on paper, okay, yeah, they might, you know, they might say, yeah, you, you could have. The math, Look, we can, we can, the math, we can prove to you, you could have. And of course, that doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. because, First of all, you've got a reaction time. Yeah, if you turn that airplane, the split second those engines quit, you turn that airplane right to mm -hmm. LaGuardia, one out of a million shots, yeah, you might have made it. But, you know, the reaction time, the, oh, my God, what has just happened, yeah. that whole thing. Probably not the words that would have been used. Uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Guess. And that plane's in Charlotte. People need yeah. to go see it. It's at the Aviation Museum. Yeah. You know, it. The damage on the plane is from the recovery of the aircraft. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. I've flown that plane. Really? Many times. Eddie has. What what, uh, what kind of plane was that? It was A320. A320. Yeah. Airbus. I, I know uh, it, the, the, I think the point when I, when I was talking earlier with uh, Howard about it was that at that moment, he was, you had to have been freaked out because it happened and he still had the mental capacity to see a runway. Oh, yeah, a river exactly. Runway. We've seen other water landings and, you know, a, a wing catches a wave. And oh, it's all over. over. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's always a great guy. It, I mean, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. He's very cool, a very nice guy. Uh, well, what's... I know him quite well, actually. Uh, I, I, he actually, I was doing some schooling out in, uh, Los Angeles, University of Southern Cal, uh, and, uh, he uh, he was one of my teachers out there, and we got to know each other real well. Mm -hmm. My mother-in-law was on his last flight uh, out of Charlotte. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's cool. And he was just stand, standing there like like in, like He's like y'all do. And yeah, what uh, I, I got to ask you, uh, and we want to talk some about the uh, some about the CD and what's on it. But one final thing before we do, and and I know. I, I, Y'all might not be the right guys to ask about this, but at least you get to see a side of it that a lot of people don't see. What 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 good, if any, is going to come from Congress asking the airlines a lot of questions? I, I understand. I've seen the stuff on television. I know how bad it looks. But every time I see the airline executives in front of Congress, I just get the feeling that you've got 100 people that know absolutely nothing about the airline industry questioning people. You, you know what I mean? It just seems so weird to me. What? I'm going to let Howard uh, 
Uh, what's going on? I, I just, just, I mean, I know you don't know why they over, I know there's a lot of things you don't know, but just from your perspective, the, every time I've ever been on a plane, think, I've never seen this confrontation. I think they, I think they overbook. Yeah. Because of the cancellation factor, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, yeah. but it, it's, it's sort of proving not to be such a good idea at yeah. this point. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, you I mean, but you the guys, other thing that the airlines are getting real used to, that they've got to get used to, cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. Movies. Oh, yeah, everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, hey, you know, you can't get away with whatever you. Well, I mean, the truth of the can. truth of it is, is you guys have all kinds of rules and protocols and things that are government implemented that y'all have to do. You don't have any say so in the matter. It's 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 just the way it is. Yeah. And I just never have been on one of those flights where. It seemed to be super confrontational, like like you. I've never had a flight attendant I, I act have, to me like. Well, you know what? And then and then and and the pilots getting involved. We don't really know what's going on back there a lot of times. Yeah, you're in the yeah. we're in the front, and we're and if the flight's going on, we got the door shut. The flight attendants they communicate with us, and mm-hmm. if they don't for some reason, and we don't know what's going on. Back in the old days, the seven twenty seven days, so to speak. I can remember flying an airplane from I don't remember where it was coming from, going down to Miami. And we had some guys that were partying excessively in the back and getting a little out of control. And the flight attendant told told me about it. I walked back to the back and told them very straightforwardly, you know, you either clean it up or we're dropping into Jacksonville and I'm going to turn you over to the authorities. And they were little angels after that. Yeah. Now, you, you can't even come close to doing that anymore. No, gosh. We took a plane to Punta Cana. It was Miami Air International. <laughs> and it was it was a party bus. Yeah. It, it was free booze for everybody. I remember there were 12 people standing in line to use the, the lavatory as we're on approach to Punta Cana. And the, the uh, flight attendant, y'all really should, you really shouldn't be <laughs> Please get out of the bathroom. Said, yeah, you really ought to sit down. Well, just hold on to something. We're right. We're hold on last. to something. <laughs> Good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. It just seems so odd to me because it now it seems now like it, when you have one incident, then you're gonna have people who get on a plane and say, "I hope something happens. I can cell phone video and get oh, on the yeah, news." Oh yeah, right. You know, well, what I mean? you know what? That's that's basically what it's coming down to. And and uh, I I don't know the answer to. Well, part the government's one, gonna, you know. What part the government's going to have in all this? But they will get involved at some point, seriously. Well, you know, Howard. Aside from the overbooking and yeah. the, the, those things, the other thing is, is about alcohol. There always seems to be some unruly. Yeah. And there was a story last week. A guy had three uh, Jack Daniels between where, where was it? Atlanta, it was Charlotte, Charlotte, and Atlanta. It was like forty it minutes. Was nuts. <laughs> and, and I know you know profits and that kind of thing, but so, so much of this stuff with unruly passengers comes down to alcohol yeah a lot of times oh yeah oh yeah, yeah that's a lot of times any business right you yeah. drink too yeah. much you're gonna mm-hmm. get in trouble yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's true uh close calls close calls well let's see i've been i've been doing this now for 37 years i can't really i haven't had any close calls really yeah. i mean it's it's i've been i guess blessed mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know about it. Thirty-nine years now, right? Really? That's something. Okay. What so about they, aliens? Aliens? <laughs> Have you seen them? Uh, <laughs> when, when when we're Not lately, <laughs> when we're out out in the yard and we're seeing planes, they're like, oh boy, they're they're awful close. Um, how close can you be to another aircraft? Well, uh, there's there's uh, certain rulings. For example, well, uh, and, and you know. People notice it, you know, when you when you're crossing the Atlantic, you know, uh, you've got we've got this thing called RVSM, thousand foot, you know, between uh-huh. uh, the two airplanes altitude wise, and and this is and true. That's, that's this not, is true. That's not a lot. Right? It's not a lot, but it's all you need. And our, <laughs> and the airplanes nowadays, you know, you're on autopilot, and those autopilots. It's are a, good. It's there, exactly. there are literally interstates in the air, aren't they? I mean, oh, like there are lanes that these, <laughs> absolutely. you know, these planes. I asked how were interesting. What I thought was an interesting question one time was when you're taking one of these flights over the Atlantic or Pacific, if you're flying across the ocean, there has to come a point in that flight. 
and it might not be for a few minutes, but there has to come a point where it's like, if something happens right now in this six minute window of time, we ain't got anywhere to go. <laughs> Don't they You've have always that got out? somewhere to go. You've always got somewhere to go. And you you very... were saying there's this little bitty island somewhere in the Pacific that people didn't even know about that had a runway. What, what? The, the Azores lodges. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Had a runway big enough to accommodate a big plane. If... Yeah. I mean, you know, oh, yeah, there's, uh, I think there was actually a, an air incident. Well, no, it was a Canadian airline. I had to dead stick it in there one time. They some something got screwed up with their fuel. Uh, they got uh, their fuel gauges went crazy or mm-hmm. something, and the, the, the engines quit. Ooh. And uh, they had to dead stick it. They luckily got into lodges, into uh, into wow. into Santa Maria. Now, when when you guys started the the band uh, aspect of this, both of the band started uh, obviously because y'all both were pilots and met each other through doing that, and both of you love music and. Uh, when y'all perform, and I know not too long ago y'all actually performed in Charlotte. Yeah. Who who's the band other than you two? When you guys perform, who who is that? Who uh, the instruments and all that stuff? Well, we have a bass player who uh, works at the bank. He's an IT specialist. Okay. The the drummer is a pilot. Okay. <laughs> Keyboard player is a uh, IBM. Uh, then we had one of our former flight attendants is, was a background singer, and she did for like three original, three not original songs. But All right, three with, with pilots in. and business people, how do y'all coordinate? That's not like it'd be tough right? to do a I show, you know. You know, that's a good question, yeah. and that's the toughest part. How many man. times did it take to reschedule this? Yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's you know, true. I mean, well, we do. You know, seriously, we get groups of these of of the band, and we got a pedal steel player. He's also he's a pilot with Jet Blue. A former Piedmont guy, and uh, we get little groups of of the band, two or three people, and practice, and we just practice with different little groups, huh. and then right at the last, right before the show, we put it all together one time, <laughs> and it works. Yeah. How would you describe the music? What what type of music is it? Uh, this the album, uh, the Jackson Howard uh, album, the second time around is country. And, yeah, uh, it is. There's, there's actually a, a, a little bit of a blues fla- flavor to it, rockabilly now, even. Now, now, whose idea and 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 what brought on the the idea of making the animal shelter beneficiary to this? Who who's the animal lover? <clears throat> well, we're all animal lovers. Yeah. We all love it. And uh, uh, I got to know Barb Davis, Secretary Treasurer, and, and Michelle Starnes, who's the president of the Friends of Union County Animal Shelter. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, it's a 501c3 nonprofit organization mm-hmm. formed to assist uh, the uh, Union County Animal Shelter financially uh, for the care of, of the animals and the well-being of these animals, uh, providing medical treatment, etc. cetera. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of times these animals in these shelters, they're, you know, they're in kind of rough shape. And uh, what Friends of Union County Animal Shelter does is they – take you know they they make them well they mm-hmm. they, uh, they even have there's a surgical facility uh, at the Union County Sheriff's Office Animal Services Bureau Adoption Center that's a lot of words um, and uh, the uh, uh, that that includes a, a spay neuter clinic and the uh, friends of Union County Animal Shelter they provide medicines they provide uh, surgical supplies and uh, even bedding for these animals. Uh, and uh, that's, that's, you know, it's important. We love animals. Uh, we've done, my family, we've done some rescues. And uh, my wife's a big animal lover. Mm-hmm. And Eddie's a big animal lover. Yeah. So how yeah. We're, uh, now, uh, we're, we're just about out of time, but I do okay. want to play one one tune here. And I, I think we're going to go cut seven. How does that sound? that sound right to you? Play what now? Number part? seven. Is that what you like? She ain't. She ain't right, but she ain't wrong. It's whatever you want to play. Uh, you know the uh, uh, number two. Number two. Love that's the trip. We, yeah, uh, well, yeah, we can do that one. That's fine. Uh, yeah, that's good with me. Uh, How do people get this? Uh, okay. Um, well, what I what I would like uh, for folks to do, if you'd like to uh, make a donation, it's a it, it's a, just going to be ten dollars. You can make a check out to Friends of UCAS Incorporated, and send a check. To uh, Jackson Howard, P.O. Box 1551, Monroe, North Carolina, 28111. 
and uh, put your address on there, and I'll send you a CD. Well, here's what we're going to do when we get finished here. We're going to play this tune when we get finished with that. Before you leave, get with Stacy, and we'll put that address on our Facebook page so people okay. can go grab it and, and have, be able to get to it. Excellent. Uh, who Shane. wrote this? What is this? this Love's a Trip. Love's a Trip is actually written by uh, Daryl and Don Ellis. They're writers in Nashville. Okay. So we got some songs on here that are written by some uh, writers in Nashville, written by Eddie, mm -hmm. and written by myself. Depends mm -hmm. on the song. Well, here you go. See what y'all think about it. And uh, we'll give you that address one more time. And uh, also put it on the Facebook page if y'all want to get the CD. This is crazy. I've been swept away. It's amazing. I'm walking around in a daze You hit me from the blind side But I could see that it was right Looks like I'm in for the ride of my life Love the trip, it's a one-way ticket To a destination that's unknown Take the chance, go for it all Every turn is a surprise And with the body of a woman And the spirit of a child Everything about her drives me wild Yes it does Love's a trip, it's a one-way trip To a destination that's unknown Take a chance, go for it all There's a little sample. There's uh, uh, ten songs on the CD, and uh, I see uh, one of them here. Uh, uh, well, hey, you, you can decide what your favorite is. I kind of like She Ain't Wrong, But She Ain't Right, and I know who uh, Merle Kilgore is. He wrote a lot of songs, and, and uh, he was actually a co-writer on this one. Yeah. And then the heavy metal blues. Listen, see if you can figure out what it's about. That's a. Uh, you say a lot of people don't get it. They don't. They don't they, get they it. Think, they don't they, get it. It's about an airplane. It's about an airplane. <laughs> they think it's know. about a woman, but yeah. it's about a seven twenty. So that must have been a big woman. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> so certainly worth a dollar. Fast woman, anyway. <laughs> certainly worth a buck a song to benefit yeah, the, uh, the shelter. You get uh, well, some thank entertainment. You. Yeah, and, uh, it's it, uh, it's it's a good CD, and and uh, again. Uh, um, all the proceeds go to Friends of the Union County Animal Shelter, and it's just uh, send a check to Jackson Howard, P.O. Box 1551, Monroe, North Carolina, 28111, and we'll get you a CD. Very good. Hey, it's a pleasure to have both of y'all in. Yeah. And, pleasure. Uh, pleasure. Uh, pleasure. Uh, you, any, uh, how much longer are you going to do this flying thing? Have you? How much longer before you retire? I've got two retire? years left before years. they're going to throw uh, me out the You know what's, uh, yeah. what's unique about that is y'all really don't have a say-so. When you reach a certain age, you, you're retired. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, you're done. And, uh, what about you? Five years. Five years. You must have started young. You've been flying 39 years? Started in 70, 78. Well, mm. not for the airlines. But yeah. When I started. Where are y'all playing, uh, playing anywhere locally uh, anytime soon? All the venues are closing. Yeah. Mm. And we, we Sad. closed out Amos' uh, in February because it closed in March. We had yeah. two weeks to go after we played. Mm -hmm. The Sun played the last show. Yeah. There's a wow. new beer place uh, in Indian Trail. Uh, uh, craft beer place. I, I don't remember the name of it. I, I don't know the stone. About uh, it. 
Uh, I can't remember. Either. Either. Well, we'll be up. We'll be up for you know looking at whatever wherever there's a place with a good PA system. Yeah, that we can mm-hmm. play. You know, that's a uh, uh, we are a fairly large band, and you know, how could, many how many in the group? I think Kyle like Leonard eight. Skinner, they sixteen people. Oh, eight, <laughs> like Tower of Powers. Yeah. Uh, do oh, you yeah. fly out of Charlotte too, Eddie? I do. Yes. Well, listen, you, just for fun, do you fly uh, domestic or across the water? Or? I get to do Buffalo, Syracuse, Rochester. Man, what'd you do wrong? <laughs> I got hired five years after he did. <laughs> well, uh, my point is this. If you fly out of Charlotte, uh, if you're going international uh, or domestic, uh, just uh, look, look at the name tag on your, on your pilot. You might be one of these guys that's, uh, yeah. that's flying you there. Uh, look for that, or, or just wear a Wixie hat, and then they'll see y'all when you yeah, when you go or a shirt or yeah. something. Uh, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate right. it, guys. Yeah, go to our Facebook page in a little while. We'll have those uh, that address up there for you. Stacy's gonna put that up, and if you guys want to order a CD, uh, you can and help the uh, shelter.